Hello and welcome to the video. We're in for a bumpy ride as we try and get back from Ibiza to London on BA City Flyer. First up, apologies, this flight was supposed to take place in daylight. Alas, that did not happen. Of course, you should always measure an airline based on how well they respond to the crisis and what they do when things go wrong. So let's find out. Let's head into the check-in hall. As you can see, it's absolutely rammed. The runway here has actually only just reopened following a four hour closure due to a firefighting aircraft being stranded on the runway. Q, 17 diversions, 22 flight cancellations and hours and hours of delays on a Sunday afternoon into the evening. We've arrived at 6 p.m. for a 7 p.m. flight that's already been delayed an hour from activity earlier in the day, but right now we're not going anywhere. The airport have closed all access to the departure area, which is up this escalator. I assume that's to prevent overcrowding in the departure lounge. The check-in for British Airways was also pretty busy. For us though, it's time to spend an hour sitting on the check-in hall floor. The airport did eventually start to allow passengers up to security and departures, calling passengers by flight number which caused the predictable chaos. After an hour and 15 minutes, we managed to push through as flights to City Airport were being asked to proceed. Before security, we do need to get our immigration exit stamp and thankfully no queues given the managed flow of passengers. The priority lane though did remain closed. I should mention at this point that BA are yet to send any communication to us regarding any delays Nothing via a push app notification, a text or an email. In fact, two weeks later, we've still had zero correspondence or even acknowledgement of the delay. And it's also relevant given the flight was already an hour delayed from first thing in the morning from other various air traffic things across Europe. In fact, the flight's been showing a delay since 10 a.m. this morning. As we're traveling in Club Europe, we're entitled to lounge access here in Ibiza. This is the queue for the lounge when we arrived, maybe 30 or 40 people in front of us. And here's where we messed up. Two hours later, we were at the front of the queue and ready to enter, just as our aircraft arrived. One in, one out makes sense if the lounge is packed, but there's loads of empty space in here. We only ended up with around 10 minutes in the lounge to grab something quick to eat and drink which was made even more challenging given our flight didn't appear on the departure screen. So we essentially had to make a call to risk it and stay for a bit or go and hope that our flight was boarding. I'm sure this is a great space to spend some time and relax before a flight, but unfortunately it wasn't our day today. Yes, we should definitely have given up earlier. Believe me, if I'd known it was gonna take two hours, I would have not even bothered to join the queue, but the terminal was already packed out and space everywhere was pretty limited. So the opportunity to go and sit down somewhere peaceful and grab a drink and a bite to eat did seem pretty appealing. I also didn't think it would take me two hours to move 30 meters. What would you have done? Let me know in the comments. We boarded at 9.45 p.m. That's three hours late to then be held on the stairs for a further 15 minutes with no aircon. Boarding was by group number, we're in group one, but the buses weren't separated so everyone was piled onto two different buses. City Flyer used the Embraer 190 exclusively within their fleet, which are fantastic jets. However, we're sitting in row two today and the overhead lockers on these jets are pretty small. Due to everyone being on the same bus, I had to squeeze our bags into rows six and nine behind the curtain somewhere down in Euro Traveller. London City Airport has super strict curfew rules, which means that anything past 10.30 on a Sunday is a divert to another airport around London. We know this and so do most of the frequent flyers on this route, but it's only at this point that we're officially told by anyone from BA that we're heading into Gatwick. On tonight's flight, there's three rows of occupied Club Europe with the remaining rows Euro Traveller. There's also 98 seats on board, each with 33 inches of seat pitch and the seats are 18.3 inches wide. That's four inches of extra leg room and over half an inch of extra width compared to British Airways A320 Neos. Bear that in mind next time you're trying to get around Europe. For us, we're in seats 2C and D and we're looking at 51.6 inches or over four feet of leg room. 
easily, I think, the most you'll find on any Euro business seat of any European airline. A slot restriction means it's another 45 minutes after boarding before we can leave. With all our room, we have two windows. There's also a reading light and an air vent each. The armrest in this row doesn't retract, but there are six inches of seat recline available for us to use. We didn't, we've got leg room, we'll be fine. There's a fold out table, which rests on the center armrest and the table moves forwards and backwards. Fair play to the captain and all the crew to be honest. He decided to move us off stand early and hold next to the runway just in case we could take advantage of an earlier slot. Unfortunately we couldn't but the effort was certainly appreciated. At just after 11pm and 4 hours late we eventually powered down runway 06 and headed home. Once airborne I checked out the loo, which was continually being cleaned and checked by the crew. It's a small flush button inside these toilets and a few customers came out saying they couldn't find it. Not something I've ever had an issue with before, but maybe that's the design flaw with these particular labs. Straight after takeoff then, and drinks and snacks are served, and it's worth noting that regardless of class on City Flyer, everyone gets this who's on board. Dinner was next, teriyaki beef with pak choy and egg fried rice. Probably the best meal I've ever had on a plane. It's accompanied with a mushroomy sort of side salad and a panna cotta dessert. Although no menu was provided, the other options did include I think a chicken dish and a vegetarian option. It's only passengers in club by the way that get this service. Although I did fly on Euro Traveller with City Flyer last year and the meal option that we had for breakfast was actually better than most other airlines. A mushroom side salad is an acquired taste. The dessert though, that was really good and I did enjoy that. I napped for the rest of the flight, it's late after all, and we touched down at around midnight, three and a half hours late and at the wrong airport. By this point we were shattered and we still had to get home. The crew announced when we landed that BA would pay up to £50 per journey for us to get home. Not too bad for us in southwest London, we can get back from Gatwick quite easily in a cab. Thankfully it wasn't a Stansted diversion which is where some of these city flyer flights often end up on a Sunday evening. That would have been way worse. I did try to claim this back from BA the next day and here's what happened on the website. Which option would you choose here? I went with delayed, cancelled and diverted. But on the next screen, diversion wasn't an option, so I had to choose the delayed one. Once I got through to that one, it became clear that, based on the wording here, BA would probably reject my claim, as it's all based on EU 261, and the delay wasn't necessarily their fault. I had to go back to the start and adjust my reason to customer service. In fairness, there was no one on the ground in Ibiza or in Gatwick to help us out there, so probably a valid reason for the claim. Two weeks later and still nothing from BA regarding our claim, no correspondence, no apology, no acknowledgement whatsoever of anything going wrong. I will provide an update in the comments when I do hear back, hopefully it won't be too much longer, but keep your eyes peeled for that response. The only redeeming factor for this entire journey was the crew on board the aircraft, they really were fantastic. To the point where more of them was getting cold, she was putting a jumper on and the cabin crew at the front of the plane started to adjust the temperature of the aircraft cabin so that it warmed up a little bit. It's touches like this that really set BA crew apart from the rest. I said at the start of the video that you should really measure an airline based on how they perform when things go wrong and I think it's pretty clear from this overall experience BA are pretty poor at this. No communication, no updates, just basic disregard for the passengers at all levels really. Thanks again to the crew on board this flight, they were fantastic and really the only redeeming thing about the whole experience that we had with BA on this occasion. Until the next flight though, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.